Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Directors and assistant directors from both ministries and other officials uh, from the two ministries, particularly the police secretary, minister of home affairs and internal security. May I recognize you, colleagues, from the media? You are welcome to this morning press briefing that will be jointly addressed uh, by the two honorable ministers. So, um, there are online and uh, established uh, organizations that are carrying this uh, press briefing live cic prime tv millennium tv and radio the dead nation and open development we will proceed as follows hereafter the minister of home affairs and internal security will give his uh, welcoming remarks and uh, invite his counterparts to deliver his statement then uh, the minister um, will deliver his address. Alternatively, he may wish to uh, first deliver his remarks, then invite his counterpart. When the two have uh, addressed the two written statements, then the Honorable Minister will equally address us uh, on other pertinent issues, which uh, will be a press briefing in itself as well. So we will basically have two in one. So this time, May I invite uh, the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security to welcome everybody and subsequently render his remarks. The Honorable Minister, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kalinda. The Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Science and Technology, Dr. Habenzu, senior members of uh, the two ministries, my colleagues uh, from the media, fellow countrymen and women. As uh, alluded to by uh, the PRO, I'll proceed with my press briefing. Thereafter, I'll call upon my colleague to also uh, deliver his statement. I now proceed. Fellow countrymen and women, the government has noted with great concern and disappointment the increased publication and circulation of false, alarming, and dehumanizing information on social media platforms <coughs> in the recent past. While the government of the Republic of Zambia promotes the freedom of expression, we are deeply concerned that if this trend is left unchecked, it has the capacity to threaten the peace, security, and order of the country. It is increasingly becoming fashionable for some citizens to post unverified content either about individuals, organizations, or indeed the government, which mostly turn out to be factually wrong. Some of these posts border on inciting national, racial, or in some instances, religious hatred. The Republican Constitution guarantees freedom of expression just like Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, to which Zambia is a party. However, freedom of expression, like any other rights, is subject to restrictions that are necessary and justified in, in the public interest. Countrymen and women, today I stand before you to address a con growing concern that threatens our safety, our privacy, and our very way of life, the rising abuse of the cyberspace. 
We all have witnessed the devastating impact of cyberbullying, crime harassment, and cybercrime. Innocent lives have been ruined, re re reputations tarnished, and livelihoods lost. It is not just individuals who suffer from this abuse of cyber attacks. Cyber attacks on businesses and government have the potential to cripple economies and undermine national security. Zambia's cyber space security is in its infants, but steadily growing. As a country, we have made some strides in improving cyber security, and we will continue building on the milestones recorded this far. It is a source of concern that abuse of cyberspace has continued despite heightened campaigns against the virus. The internet has placed power in people's hands which should be used positively and not to distract people from important national issues. In our, ben in our unbending resolve to combat abuse of the cyberspace, the government has taken the following measures. One, establish the Zambia Information and Te Communications Technology Authority, ZICTA, to regulate and oversee the IC sector. Two, implemented the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act of 2021 to provide a legal framework for cyber security. Three, launched the National Cyber Security Strategy to coordinate efforts and improve incidents response. The government shall at all times take action to protect the cyberspace. We shall continue to strengthen the law where necessary, its enforcement, awareness campaigns, and international co cooperation to combat this global threat. The law will be applied fairly but firmly to deter would-be offenders. Countrymen and women, let me take this opportunity to warn individuals engaging in publishing misleading information deliberately aimed at destabilizing the country to desist forthwith as they will be met with the full force of the law. Citizens are free to criticize each other or even the government in accordance with the dictates of democracy and the provisions of the law. However, this must be done in a civilized manner and based on facts, truth, and not lies. Countrymen and women, the Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security wishes to remind the public of the existence of Section 54 in the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act No. 2 of 2021, which states as follows. A person who with intent to comply, to compromise rather, the safety and security of any other person publishes information or data presented in a picture, image, text, symbol or voice or any other form in a computer system commits an offense in, and is liable on conviction to a fine of less, not less than 500 Southern Penalty Units or to imprisonment for a term exceeding five years or both. To that effect, <coughs> the public is urged to adhere to the law and avoid social media posts that may make them come in conflict with the law. What's up that are illegal? and in bad faith as they will be held responsible for any publication of such information. In conclusion, we urge citizens to be wary of purveyors of fake news, misinformation, propaganda on social media platforms. We also call upon all citizens to be 
impassioned advocates and champions of responsible use of the cyberspace. I thank you. At this juncture, I would like to call upon my colleague, Honorable Mutati, Minister of Science and Technology, to also address the nation on these issues we are discussing this morning. Honorable Mutati. Th thank you, Minister. I'm the Minister of uh, Home Affairs and Internal Security. I see the permanent secretaries present here and other senior government officials members of the press, countrymen, women, and the youth. Let me begin by welcoming you to the press briefing today in partnership with my colleague, the Honorable Jack Mwimbu, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, as we come together to address some of the most pressing issues facing our nation in the digital age. In the digital age, the internet has become an essential tool for communication, information sharing, doing business in the cyberspace. Our lives depend on the cyberspace because whatever we do on a daily basis is connected to the use of information and communication technologies. It is, however, disheartening to note that social media in Zambia, such as Facebook, has become a breeding ground for various forms of abuse, misinformation, defamation, including online gender-based violence and online child abuse. You may be aware that such online abuse has the potential to cause physical, mental, and psychological harm to the citizens. Furthermore, our government recognizes the severe impact of cyber fraudulent activities on the lives of the ordinary people of Zambia. As Minister responsible for technology and science, I want to assure you that we are committed and are taking decisive action to enhance cyber security and combat cyber crimes with urgency and determination. We are investing in advanced cyber security tools and technologies to detect, prevent the spread of harmful content and misuse of ICTs. We need to remind each other that when we go on social media, we still remain Zambians, and as such, we call upon you to uphold the values that define our country. We are known for peace, unity, and tranquility. Let us exhibit these values when we are in the cyberspace. As I conclude, let me point out that our government is committed to ensuring that, that Zambia is ready for the digital future. By addressing the, challenge, the challenges on online scams, protecting our children, and supporting the growth of the digital economy, we are taking concrete steps towards creating a secure and prosperous digital environment for all the people of Zambia. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mutati. <clears throat> My colleague, uh, I would now like uh, to address the nation on my other part, which relates to the government response to the statement that was made by the former president of the Republic of Zambia at a rally in Zambia. Countrymen and women, you are all aware that on the 24th of August 2024, 
the citizenship, the citizen party. What do they call it? Citizens first, Hadelari in Samsha, wherein one of the speakers at that rally was the former president of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edigwa Chagwalungu. At that rally, the former president made a statement to the nation wherein he stated that those policemen and the civil servants that are not going to adhere to what he perceives not to be in accordance with the law will be punished when he comes into power in 2026. I would like to address one particular limb of that particular statement. President Lungu stated that those who will be found wanting, according to him, he will instruct his people and this government to follow those individuals to their homes and ensure that they are punished. Ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, that statement that was made by the former head of state of this country is highly irresponsible, mischievous, preposterous, and should never have been made by a person who held high office in this country. I would have had no problem whatsoever if Mr. Longo had stated that those who be going against the law will be punished in accordance with the law when he comes to power, if ever, in 2026. But I find the statement that he and his cadres will follow people in their homes and do whatever they want to do to those people who have been found offending his party and his organization. It therefore follows that President Lungu is preaching violence against any member of the Zambia Police Service or any security wing or any public worker whom he perceives to have been found wanting. It follows that President Lungu is preaching violence against anyone who he perceives to be offending his organization. Countrymen and women, we should not forget where we're coming from. President Lungu was president of this country. And the UPND and its alliance partners were in opposition until 2021. We are all aware of the heinous crimes that were committed against the UPND members, other members of the public, and the alliance partners during the reign of President, former President Lungu. 
Is he advising us? Is he advising us that in the same vein that he is telling his people that we should be following all those who did wrong things during his period, we should be following them in their homes? Is he encouraging us to be violent against those who were in government that time? Is he now telling us, countrymen and women, that we should follow all those who were issuing illegal instructions to the Zambia Police Service? and the officers of the law then? Is he telling us that all those who issued instructions <coughs> to the police to arrest the current president of the Republic of Zambia over trumped up charges of treason should be followed? And should not only be followed through the process of the law, but we should follow them to their homes. Is that the advice he's giving us? Is he telling us that we should follow all those who killed Mapenzi Chibulo to their homes and not follow the law? Is he telling us that those who killed Degreza Matapa in, in Mutendere, we should follow them in their homes? Is that the advice he's giving us as Zambians, as former president of the Republic of Zambia? Fortunately, fortunately, the current president of the Republic of Zambia does not believe in lawlessness. He does not preach lawlessness like President Edika Chagolungu. No wonder, no wonder during his reign there was lawless in, in lawlessness in this country. There was disorder, there was mayhem, there was bloodshed in this country. A lot of people were killed in this country because of his leadership. His irresponsible leadership which preached and which continues to preach violence. The people of Zambia have never forgotten how violent the PF regime was during his reign. He's once again telling the nation that if he is given the privilege of ruling this country again, Zambia will go back to the dark days of violence. And that is what he's preaching. If an officer offends the law, why follow him to his home where there are women and children in the home? Why incite members of the public and his political party to use violence against those officers if they are found wanting? If he's not a violent man, I have no doubt in my mind that he's a violent man. And we hate for ourselves the statement that was made in Samsha. When I first saw that video, I couldn't believe it. I've never heard of any leader in this continent who could preach violence so openly without shame. But there it was. There it was, preaching violence. Even inciting his members that when he comes into power, those who will be found wanting should be killed. That is my, my interpretation. Why would you go to somebody's home with a horde of cadres following somebody who has offended the government? What sort of lawlessness is that? This country is supposed to be a democratic country. 
if an officer is found wanting, there are processes, legal processes which should be undertaken. Why would he be inciting members of the public to take the law in their own hands, go to somebody's you know, house, inflict, to inflict pain and injury on the family and on the officer? Countrymen and women, you have hate for yourself. What sort of a leader you had and what sort of a leader you are going to have if we have the unfortunate situation of having him back into government. As government, we are not going to tolerate lawlessness in this country. It is our duty and the responsibility to ensure that there is law and order. There is no one, there is no one who is above the law. No one is above the law. If anyone breaches the law, the law will follow. There are laws of, that are applicable in this country. All of us are subject to the law. I therefore call upon all leaders of political parties and those in government to be responsible and not to bring lawlessness in this country. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Ministers for the address. Allow me now to invite my colleagues to <coughs> render some questions to you, Honorable Ministers, so that uh, you can uh, answer the questions and uh, in the process inform the nation of government position on matters that they are going to ask. So colleagues, the ministers are available to ask the questions pertaining to the issues that the Honorable Ministers have raised. You will introduce yourself and indicate to whom the question is directed at and where you are coming from. You are at liberty now to raise questions. We have noticed that there are none. <laughs> To the appear there are no questions. Yeah, I can see there are two questions now. Huh? After thought. Yes. yes, my brother. And the other one, lady here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Guest Jerry from uh, Diamond TV. Uh, to the Home Affairs Minister, will there be any action that will be taken uh, following the remarks made by the former president? Thank you. The lady behind you pose the question as well. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Hope from uh, Millennium TV. Please allow me just to uh, go off topic a bit. Uh, recently, we have seen issues where people have been abduct uh, abducted and uh, later on found dead. Recently, I think a lady from Makeni, her body was actually dumped at her parents' house after she was murdered. So I just wanted to find out if at all the security wings and the ministry are doing something to put an end to this issue. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, but the largest minister, since the law has been broken by the rules, all you can do is I was sick if you can give an update on uh, uh, the the capturing of uh, the Pataka Central is uh, fugitive now. Well, as you have uh, indicated, uh, we are now going out of uh, what we had uh, come here for. I would like to state that uh, we as a government and the Minister of uh, Home Affairs, we don't micromanage the Zambia Police Service. The Zambia Police Service are at liberty to investigate the, the matter and analyze the issues that arose out of that statement. So I will not state what action will be taken. It is up to the Zambia Police Service to investigate the issue. 
On the issue of uh, the lady who was abducted, I can confirm that we, we did receive a report. The Zambia Police Service are investigating the matter. I cannot comment any further than that. The matter is under investigation. On the issue of uh, JJ Banda, the investigations are still going on. Hope that uh, I hope that uh, soon uh, something will be you know, uh, uh, done and uh, the nation will be informed accordingly. So allow me now to invite Honorable Minister of Science and Technology to give a synopsis or a wrap up of the statement there. If there are no further questions, please. It appears so. Yeah, I, I can see that two questions. Um, uh, good morning, Honorable Ministers. Um, maybe in, in the wrap up, I'd like to find out are there any statistics to the cyber crimes um, that you are indicating that they are on the rise? <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Ministers. Um, mine is just to find out the political status or the status of um, political activism on social media and how that is uh, coming towards the government, how the government is ready to respond. Can you be very specific here when you talk about political activism? So, there are a lot of comments that have been passed. You, for once, uh, you gave an example of the former president. Uh, giving out a speech of which it uh, went viral on social media. So how has the activities, the political activities being uh, declaring rather, been playing a role in promoting the freedom of speech in that? Thank you very much. Uh, I'll start with your comment and my colleague will tag on. You, you heard us make statements pertaining to this. Yeah? We are calling uh, upon all Zambians to be responsible when they are using the cyberspace. If you are... Uh, ...in social media. We don't, we don't discourage anybody from that, doing that. But we encourage the, those who are using the cyberspace, social media and other uh, technologies to be responsible and not go against the law. That is all what we are saying. Otherwise, there is freedom of uh, uh, speech and the rights of others are respected by this government. So after Honorable Mutata has delivered his uh, summary, the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security will close. Was there, was there another? Oh, yeah, on the issue of statistics. Well, Maybe my colleague can uh, comment on that. Thank you, Minister. Maybe let me comment on that and then just wrap up, um, you know, uh, in, in one shot. We may not have the exact number in terms of figures as we sit here, but those figures are available and we can make them available to, to yourself. A common scam is mobile money and most of you are exposed to that probably on a daily basis. It's on the increase. And those are the things that we are actually tackling. And many more cyber scams that are destabilizing the lives of our people, endangering their mental conditions, and creating total unhappiness. What we must say from a government perspective is that whenever you are in the cyberspace, your footprint will remain. You can't hide. Whatever you do in cyberspace, we are going to smoke you out. We have got the tools, the technology, and the equipment to find you. So, timely warning. We shall find you, we shall smoke you out. And everything you do will be found. That's what I can say. Thank you. The Honorable Minister, sir. <clears throat> thank you. I just want to thank my colleagues uh, from the media houses that you're always available when we call you at short notice. 
you know, to address the nation through you. We also want to apologize. Uh, this uh, press briefing was supposed to have commenced at 10.30, but there were some other issues we are trying to address. You know, please bear with us. Thank you once again. Uh, you always afford us the opportunity to interact with you whenever there is need. Thank you so much. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.